Okay, so this is going to be a brief lecture on the PBC's counter plan. PBC stands for plea based ceilings. And we're just going to briefly go over uh, what PBCs are, what they're supposed to do, with which disads you can read the counter plan, against which AFs, and then um, the permutation preempt stuff that's at the top of the file. So, first, what is a plea based ceiling and what does it do? Um, so the goal of a plea based ceiling is to sort of limit prosecutorial discretion, encourage transparency and fairness in the plea bargaining process. So in this status quo, prosecutors are sort of able to pretend like they're giving a lenient deal to the defendant and make it seem like if they go to trial, they're going to get a very harsh penalty. And that way they're able to coerce them into taking the plea deal, even though they most likely didn't do something that's that bad. Uh, so the way that the plea-based ceiling works is we implement a way that the defendant will always know the maximum punishment for if they go to trial. So, for example, if you're a defendant and the prosecutor is like, uh, you know, I'm offering you five years, but in trial they can get you for xyz and you might be in prison for 20 years so you better take the deal right the way that it works is the prosecutor will first go to the judge and the judge will determine the fixed discount system the fixed discount price uh which means that they will determine how much of, of a reduced sentence you can get if you take the plea so let's say they say you can get you know 25 percent reduced if you take the plea that means you could get three years but if you go to trial maximum prison time you can get would be four uh which just avoids the kind of abil uh, avoids letting prosecutors scare the defendants and lets them know the maximum amount of time they can get so the way that this solves is it kind of caps the sentences and prosecutors are unable to offer super high sentences just so that they can get higher conviction rates it avoids the kind of arbitrariness of the regular plea bargaining process the next is that it's documented so prosecutors have to write down all of the stuff that happens during the plea bargaining process so judges are able to calculate the fixed discount and the ceiling so prosecutors are unable to uh kind of exploit loopholes and they have to follow a clear outline so uh, the way that this kind of solves the AF without linking to the disad, because remember, when you read this counterplan, you'll read a disad that l the link is abolition of plea bargaining. We cause a more transparent system. Um, defendants always see that their sentence will be predetermined, whether it be in the plea bargaining process or if they actually go to trial. So prosecutors are unable to coerce them. And since it's all written down, judges have oversight into this process. So prosecutors kind of can't take total control. It also solves for innocent people a lot better because prosecutors cannot force innocent defendants to plead guilty by pretending like they're offering a lenient deal since the same offer would help the defendant after trial. So uh, the defendant will always know what happens and they'll be incentivized to actually go to a trial where they'll have a, have a case and can prove that they're innocent. Um, but also in the case that they do have to go to take a sentence, um, the punishment will be a lot less extreme and they won't have to endure the process of prosecutors kind of scaring them into taking a plea deal. Also, the counterplan avoids circumvention because plea bargaining will still exist. We just kind of modify it. We also change the culture argument because prosecutors change the way that they exist within the plea bargaining process and it solves the way that they're always motivated to um, offer a extreme deal to innocent people because there will be a lot of oversight. So, um, unless it was obvious to you, the AFs that you would read this counterplan against would be AFs that talk about prosecutorial overreach, coercion, coercion or discretion. So, the counterplan is able to solve a lot of the kind of arbitrariness that is the plea bargaining process is perceived to have also a lot of the prosecutorial overreach. So, for example, um, PBCs would probably solve the discretion advantage um, that we have in our AF because we solve the way that prosecutors function within the plea bargaining process. It's just basically any AF that talks about coercion or discretion um, 
would be good to read it against. And you should be reading the counter plan with a disad like the budget disad, um, court packing disad, court clog disad, or even the Trump disad. So all of those are um, perfect to read because we don't get rid of plea bargaining. We just modify the way that it works. So the, if the link is to abolishing plea bargaining, it's definitely compatible. Um, so at the top of the counter plan, there's a lot of stuff about like permutations and uh, mutual exclusivity. So first is the competition of the counter plan. The Supreme Court of Illinois card in the file talks about why you cannot abolish and also alter the terms, which shields the link to the permutation, because if the AF is like, oh, we're going to abolish plea bargaining, but then the counter plan says, no, we should keep it, but just modify it, you can't do both at the same time. You can't get rid of something and also reform it. Um, so that should help you get out of debating the permutation, because it just functionally does not work. Um, another thing is the preemptive theory. I don't know if people are going to be reading that um, during Woodward, but the interpretation is that the AF should get one permutation written down, given to you before the 1AR. Um, there's a lot of reasons for that, and the way that this should function is that instead of the AF being able to make a lot of bogus permutations super quickly, um, you hold them to what they've written down and given to you. I don't really know if people are going to be reading that, but you can definitely take that out. It doesn't seem too important, especially if you're not that fast and you need to get through other stuff, but uh, it just kind of protects you from the F going haywire on a bunch of perms. Um, and then the counter plan is also not a plan-inclusive counterplan because we're not eliminating any forms of plea bargaining. We're just changing the way that it works. So it's not a pick, and it's completely competitive because you cannot abolish something and reform how it works at the same time. So, yeah, that's basically it. Um, if you have any other questions about the counterplan, you can slack me or something. This is Jessa, by the way. Um, that's it. Okay.